Hello, my name is Mark Long with Carlson Software, and welcome to this video tutorial on using Carlson Hydrology for storm drainage design and calculations. In this tutorial, we will go over to define watershed layers and how to use this within our design. First, locate the watershed menu, come down to define watershed layers. This dialog box is the interface to assign specific ground covers to closed polylines in the drawing based on their drawing layers. There are three modes of operation, the rational method, the SCS method, and the hydrocad method. With the dialog set to the rational method, the runoff coefficients are the C factors in the rational equation, Q equals CIA, where Q is the flow, I is the rainfall intensity and A is the area. With the dialog set to the SCS method, the coefficients are set to values from 0 to 100, so roofs might be 85 and woods 20. A soil type must also be specified for each ground cover. Type A, B, C, and D type soils. With the dialog set to the HydroCAD method, the runoff coefficients are not set at all, but are added when the data is exported to HydroCAD. The default runoff curve number field is grayed out. You can change the layer name, but not the description of the ground cover. This is because the specific descriptions provided for HydroCAD ground covers must exactly match the description specified within HydroCAD itself. With the rational method or SCS method, the runoff coefficient area polylines are used to determine the weighted runoff coefficients for the drainage area in conjunction with other Carlson hydrology commands such as watershed analysis and edit sewer structure. The runoff coefficient polylines are automatically clipped by the drainage perimeter polyline to find the coefficient sub area within the drainage perimeter. Therefore, it is important to close all polylines. Use distinct layers for features that have distinct runoff values and to assign a runoff coefficient to the unassigned or remainder areas. It is also important to enclose areas beyond the site with closed polylines and assign them runoff coefficients to those layers so to account for off-site water entering the site. First, let's take a look at each method in depth, starting with the rational method. First, we can set some of the default layers to be used. First one would be the default ground cover. If we select set, we can look at our runoff coefficient library and select the uh, default ground cover. Uh, with this site, I know that I have a 7% cross slope pretty much across the site, so I'm going to say soils steep 7% or greater with a 0.35 runoff coefficient. Set the default ground cover. The default runoff coefficient has been assigned. Now let's take a look at our soils layer. Uh, we can set that, and this is just a layer in our project. It can be any layer you want to use, but I use E for existing soils, the E representing existing and also set the soils label layer set come down to e soils for existing soils text select that our water watershed line work i like to designate most of my watershed layers with a w so i can quickly e quickly get to them so if we select set click in here and hit w you can see we can come down to our w's really quick and i will do use w watershed for the line work, set W watershed text for the text. The runoff flow line layer, we can set that. W come down to runoff flow. Next, if these layers have not been made and, and you want to make them at this time, you could hit create layers. Uh, the next thing we want to do is I'm going to click OK here and I'm going to go and I want to show you some stuff inside the drawing itself. If I isolate some layers, 
uh, and we'll look at impervious layers for my different surfaces you can see that I have a layer called W concrete pads W sidewalk and W roadways let's see how we'll use that in our watershed defined layers we can set add and we can select the layer select we will come down to W once again we'll start with concrete pads and we'll set set the ground cover for that by using the library and we can come in here and look for uh, roofs on an incline is what we'll use has a runoff coefficient of one you can set the hatch pattern here and the layer as well and select the color select OK now you can see that this layer has been added to our list let's do another add select layer W will come down this time and do roadways we can do, set our ground cover come down through our list and find uh, streets asphaltic we'll select that one and you can see the runoff coefficient the layer the pattern and we'll change the color of this one just so we can so we can tell a difference between them select OK and you can see it's been added to our list let's add our last one add select layer W W sidewalk select the ground cover in our runoff coefficient library and you can see we have streets drives and walks I'll use that one and it sets a runoff coefficient of 0.95 the layer the hatch and I'll change the color of this one too so we can see select OK and OK now we have our three layers in here for our uh, our uh, ground covers for our site by selecting OK or we would like to be if we want to be able to see the different ones and you can see if I hit that now you can see each color that I assigned has a hatch just to show you and give you an identification you may want to use these for your submittals uh, to the towns to indicate the different uh, ground covers that you are are dealing with on your project going back to the watershed menu define watershed we can easily select clear hatch let's take a look at how we can use the program to calculate our weighted C first I would like to turn on a few layers for our, for our design as you can see I just turned on the the drainage areas for each inlet the the our layer closed polyline system is showing up here as well as a preliminary drainage layout now if we go under the watershed menu and come down to calculate C factor we can clear the selected selection that are in there we have area units that we can use in square feet square miles or acres I prefer acres and I will just simply select a watershed select the watershed and what you can see here is that each of our layers and the C factors assigned to them have been have been listed here for you uh, the area for each one and the percent of the area of each one uh, and each of our layers the roofs inclined streets asphaltic and any default ground any any area that is not within the closed polyline system would be set to the default ground cover which is the lawns uh, steep soles shown here it's clear select the other another watershed this time we'll select one on this side so that we can see the sidewalk will be added select and as you can see here sidewalk concrete is added to our list uh, as well as a roofs incline our streets and our default ground cover is listed here as well area percentages also below please see that there's the calculated C factor for you the weighted C and the total area of the watershed the SCS method is similar to the rational method as far as layer setup but we will also be including soils types and curve numbers associated with each soil for this example I will open an existing drawing that contains our different soils types labeled A B C and D next go to the watershed menu and select define watershed layers 
as you can see we'll keep our layers we assigned using the rational method but using the SCS method we will specify new default ground cover default ground cover and set for this we will use um, open space fair and we can select a type A soil and you can see that the default runoff curve number is 49 if we were to go back and set this to a B type soil you can see that the curve number increases now let's examine our drawing for an overview of the closed polyline layers within this project as you can see we have layers assigned W watershed W watershed text we have our souls and our souls text also we have different type of ground covers in here as well HC paved roads HC paved parking HC roofs HC grass we also show in here our W dash runoff flow now let's assign these layers uh, in our define watershed layer we select define watershed layers we'll add select the layer I will use screen pick for this example you can see I selected HC grass fair let's select the ground cover from our library we will use grass fair and if we, if we double click within this dialog box we can edit the actual curve numbers for each soul's type select OK and OK now we can also see here that the default curve number has been assigned the layer hatch layer the hatch pattern as well as the color I'm gonna change this to kinda of match the layer so we'll select green and OK now you can see that this has been added to our list let's do the other ground covers add select layer pick screen For this we will select HC roofs now let's select our ground cover let's look at paved lots roofs and driveways select that and OK we get a runoff curve number of 98 we can change our hatch our pattern and we can also select a different color that kind of matches the uh, the layer okay add it to our list next let's add the next layer select pick screen for this one we will select this our HC paved roads we will select our ground cover our ground cover will be streets curbs and sewers for this selection double clicking we can modify select OK and OK again we get a default runoff curve number our hatch pattern and we'll leave this one as red because I do believe that layer is red select OK shows up in our list let's add our last one select the layer screen pick our paved parking select library we'll use paved streets with open ditches for this one double click you could edit the numbers if you like and select OK. Let's define our hatch, our pattern, and we'll select blue as the color to match the layer. Now if we want to look at each of these and hatch them so we can see them on screen more clearly, you can select hatch all and select OK. And now you can see each ground cover has been assigned with a hatch pattern to help you illustrate or to help you understand better. Let's see how this will work with our uh, under our watershed menu the curve number and runoff if we select this select clear we could select by a watershed and we'll do that we'll select the perimeter polyline select and you can see that each soils type and each ground cover the area and the percent area has been assigned down below if we enter in a rainfall in inches you can see that our curve number has been calculated the total area the calculated runoff and the volume in acre feet 
Let's do this one more time. Select watershed, enter for perimeter, select here, and you can see that the numbers have been generated again. Now, since we have our rainfall in inches already assigned, we get a calculated runoff and a volume down here as well. Now, let's talk about the uh, taking a little closer look at the HydroCAD method, the last method I want to show you. By selecting, we'll go to Watershed, Define Watershed Layers. Remember, you can always save these and load them at a later date. For this example, I'm going to select Load. Carlson Projects. HydroCAD. As you can see here, the default runoff curve will select over into the HydroCAD menu, the method, and as you can see, each ground cover layer and ground cover has been assigned. Some of the other items have been blocked out or grayed out, uh, and these would this will all be assigned when the when the uh, layers and ground cover are exported to HydroCAD, and the the uh, runoff coefficients or the curve numbers will be assigned. This concludes the second tutorial on using Carlson Hydrology for storm drainage design and calculations. Thank you for watching this tutorial and please visit our website at www.carlsonsw.com for future tutorials and product details.